Okay, now that we've installed both EasyPHP and the PHP development tools in Eclipse, let's go ahead and configure Eclipse to make use of EasyPHP. Then we'll create a small PHP script to test the configuration is correct. So we'll start by opening up the Eclipse preferences, navigating to the PHP section. You can see there are a variety of different options in here to configure the coding style editor, for example. And we'll start by pointing the PHP executables to the PHP interpreter provided by EasyPHP. If I click on Add here, we'll make an entry for PHP 5.5. And now we need to actually point to the executable. So click on Browse. We need to navigate in the local file system to the EasyPHP directory. Here it is. Under Binaries, PHP, PHP running version. And in here we'll find PHP.exe right here. Select that and click Open you'll find it also finds the php.ini file at the same time and we leave all the other settings at the default so that now sets up uh, PHP 5.5 runtime for use within Eclipse and if we click on OK we'll save that now let's go ahead and create a PHP project so we pull down file new other scroll down to PHP pick PHP project, click on next. We'll call this one store because it's going to be used for developing a, um, a store, obviously this being comp 344. And we're going to create the project actually outside the Eclipse workspace. So we need to browse around. We're going to put it actually under uh, the easy PHP directories. So we can skate out local disk, program files, our program files x86, easy PHP dev server, data, local web, where you find the various different local directories. I'm actually going to create a new subdirectory in here. I'll click make new folder. And I'll call this one store. And we'll select store as being the location for this project. We'll use the default PHP settings and we'll enable JavaScript support for this project. Notice that Eclipse warns that if a project is created in this location, the wizard will automatically try to detect any existing source. Well, of course, there isn't any. This is a new directory. The remaining settings can be left at the default. Let's we'll click on Finish. It points out this kind of project is associated with a PHP perspective rather than a Java perspective. And so we'll open that right now. Click on Yes, and here's our new project with the appropriate PHP settings. Now we can click on this, right click, choose new PHP file. We'll call this one index.php. It's in our slash store folder. We'll just pick up the template for a new simple PHP file. Click on OK. In fact, this gives us a little bit of text that we don't really want. Now we'll enter in our desired text. This is going to be an HTML file, of course. So we put in HTML. Let's keep it very simple. We'll have a very simple head. And in there we'll put a title of store test. Next we add a body. And the body has to contain our PHP code. There's the PHP. And then here we'll just simply put a call to PHP info, which will display information about the PHP configuration. The asterisk indicates we haven't saved the file yet, so I'll press Control S to save it. And now I should be able to simply go up here and click on run index.php. You can see the URL is slash localhost slash store slash index.php, which should map to the store directory and the index.php that we 
uh, just created and it opens up a little web browser window and there in fact is the PHP information. Uh, it's worthwhile taking a little time to, to scroll through this because you can see exactly how your PHP installation was configured. So if we scroll right through you'll see it also contains information about uh, the various different libraries and also down here we'll see things like MySQL information uh, that indicates that MySQL has been installed as well. So that indicates that our installation is now working correctly.